What's up savvy expats? I can say with 110% certainty that my life in the Philippines is paradise and I wouldn't trade it for the world. But I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that the initial phases of my move didn't come with its own sets of challenges and obstacles. Why is that? Because moving here without the proper guidance and connections resulted in three things. I ended up wasting a lot of precious time trying to do things by myself. I wasted money on getting overcharged and in the long run, wasted effort on processes that could have been shortcutted and expedited. And as someone who spent his whole life in the States, clueless as to how to go about moving abroad to the Philippines, it was almost as if I experienced death by 1000 cuts. That is why in this video, we're going to disclose the three most common problems or obstacles that expats commonly face when moving to the Philippines. These are the kind of problems you rarely hear any other vloggers, blog posts, or articles ever talk about. So without further ado, we're going to be spilling the beans in this video. The first quote unquote cut that I personally face is an issue that many expats aren't even fully aware of. And to this day, this is an expense that many expats don't even realize they're spending on, which is draining their wallet month by month just because they don't know about the Philippine market here. That's right, you guessed it, that is the rental skin tax. The rental skin tax is all too common in the Philippines and I've seen it time and time again firsthand. Have you ever logged into one of those Philippine online property sites? We're talking Lamundi, .property.ph, Hopler. You probably find yourself scrolling through these sites. The condos are already pricey as it is, but nevertheless, you still find interest in a few of the units. You contact the realtor, you meet up with them in person, expecting to see the unit that you booked a viewing for, but lo and behold, it's a completely different condo unit. When you ask the realtor a very sensible question as to why the unit you're touring isn't the same one that you booked for, of course, the realtor will tell you that the unit you booked for is no longer available. And more often than not, when this happens, it's because they wanna show you a more expensive unit, which is more profitable for them. For example, you may have been eyeing up that nice 1K per month property online, on the online property site, but what they're showing you is a 2K USD unit in person. This is the classic bait and switch technique used by countless realtors in the Philippines, and you will not know that until you actually come here and experience it on your own like I have. Not only have I experienced this several times, but many of my clients as well. And don't get me wrong, while it's not necessarily illegal, if anything, it's more so just frustrating because they're showing you and advertising one specific unit, but then showing you something else, so it feels like it's a waste of time. Not only that, but I've also worked with several realtors and brokers out here in the Philippines. And as soon as these brokers hear that I have expat clientele, which in other words means the dollar, they most always ask me if I wanted to mark up the price of the unit by an extra 10K pesos up to 50 k pesos for the month and for those of you that don't know that's an extra 200 to 300 dollars per month on your rental unit for foreigners like yourself so you can imagine you're unnecessarily leaking a lot of money out of your wallet of course i'm not going to sell out my morals nor my clients that i care so deeply about so I don't work with these kind of individuals. And so after that experience, for the next six months, I scouted, looked for, and vetted the most trustworthy and competent boots on the ground contacts that I can find here in Manila and across the boot. Today, we've accrued a strong network of boots on the ground contacts that can easily be bought out for an extra dime. And so as part of my one-to-one -one expat relocation services, I not only help you take care of your visa work, your healthcare, and banking logistics, but I'll also help you settle down into your ideal condo unit according to your preferences. So what we'll do is we'll go out and vet, scout, and secure the leasing agreement for our clients so that once they actually arrive in the Philippines, it's a smooth transition into their new home. But yes, do bear in mind that it is very common for the bait and switch technique to be used here in the Philippines. It really does waste a lot of your time. And also some realtors do mark up the price as a skin tax as soon as they see that you're a foreigner. That said, quick announcement, the doors are open to our one-to-one -one expat relocation program where we will handle the entire A to Z logistics and processes of your transition to the Philippines. If you're seeking speed, certainty, and someone to take care of your move for you in this new chapter of your life, then feel free to book a call with us in the link in the description down below. And if you're a good fit to work with me, by the end of the call, we'll put together a tailored solution for this move in this next chapter of your life. We only have five more slots left for the month of April 
until July, so be sure to reserve your spot now. Moving on to the second problem you may face when moving to the Philippines, that is the extensive visa processes. So to preface, obtaining a tourist visa and getting into the country as a tourist is a relatively straightforward and easy process. And I think that's why so many foreigners love the Philippines because the 30-day visa incentive is very hard to pass up on, let alone the beaches, weather, and low-cost living we have out here. Now, a common issue with moving to the Philippines, I'm talking long-term, which is actually why a lot of people come to these services that we offer, is because the process of getting these visas is very extensive and it can actually be quite complicated at times. This is specifically the case with getting your SRRV retirement visa, your 13A marriage visa, and your dual citizenship if you qualify. In the past, I've seen a lot of my clients run around wasting time getting their medical clearance, police clearance, and other stacks of documents out there in the States, when in reality, this whole process could have been shortcutted and handled out here in the Philippines if you're in touch with the right people. And don't even get me started on them having to apostle these documents and in the long run, end up wasting thousands of dollars and hours of their time when they didn't have to. All right, we changed location due to a little bit of rain, but with all of that said, do bear in mind that when you're handling your visa work processes, it can be very lengthy, let alone dealing with the immigration here in the Philippines. Now, the third problem that many expats face when moving to the Philippines is accessing their foreign funds. Moving your money from your US bank accounts to the Philippines can be quite a hassle if done on a frequent basis. And don't get me wrong, it is still worth it because of the 50 five to one favorable exchange rates that we get from dollars to pesos. But then again, you should transfer your funds with much caution and discretion. Reason being is number one, if you're transferring anything over 10K USD cross border from a foreign country into the Philippines, it can potentially get flagged as money laundering. And secondly, as a foreigner, if you're sending US funds to a local Philippine bank account, it's typically done through money remittance services like Remitly, PayPal, and Wise. And not that it's happened to me, but I have heard stories of other expats transferring their funds to these money remittance services and their funds do get lost or it's never sent. Either that or their account shuts down abruptly for no apparent reason. And so what most of my clients do when they arrive in the Philippines initially without a Philippine local bank account is they'll use their American debit card. I personally use B of A, but I highly recommend that you go for the Charles Schwab debit card, specifically for the 0% international fees. Because you already know if you're coming here and you're getting charged on international fees, that will rack up. In my case, I was also able to secure an international travel rewards card so that I don't get charged any international fees. Now keep in mind, as an expat, within the first 59 days in the Philippines, you will yet to qualify to open up your local Philippine bank account. This is because obtaining your alien certificate of registration card or in other words your acr card is required to open up a local philippine bank account you can only qualify for this card so as long you've stayed in the country for a minimum of 59 days however if you do work with me we can expedite that timeline so that you can get your acr card sooner and thereby eventually open up your local philippine bank account within days upon your arrival and then once we've got your local bank account opened up you can then transfer your u.s funds and internationally to your Philippine account via WISE or Amit. And this typically takes three to five business days to complete in my experience. So it's best to transfer in relatively large quantities as long as it's not over that 10K limit so that you don't get flagged for money laundering. And so there you have it, Savvy Expats. We just broke down the obstacles and challenges to be weary of when moving to the Philippines long-term. And if you're planning on moving to the Philippines, but you don't have a tentative date yet, I do have a free 15-step checklist resource that you can explore in the link in the description down below. In the meantime, this checklist breaks down the 15 crucial steps that you need to take for a successful move to the Philippines upon arrival, from securing your ideal unit to getting your tourist visa and shipping your belongings. This checklist lays out the basics basics of what you need to know. That's in the link in the description. And if you need someone to hold you by the hand in your Philippine move, the link to book a call with me is there down below as well. And so thank you for watching Savvy Expats. As always, it was a pleasure and we'll see you in the next video. God bless.